what is the role of a guru in your life? And is it necessary to have an in-person guru? I personally met uh, 14, 15 gurus. You know, yes, of course, there is a role. But uh, before you ask that question, you have to also ask yourself that, are you qualified for a guru? What guru implies is that somebody who takes you from goo, darkness, to ru, towards light. Are you willing to go there? Because usually people want to just fix their small problems in the name of guru. Because I can see the questions mostly. Their psychological tantrums, they really don't want solutions. But if you really want that, then guru appears into your life. Because then you are entering a different network of energy in life. And uh, that is about just the human form gurus. But if your longing is there for a guru, then like I was mentioning earlier that anything, any situation which is inspiring you to go from darkness to light is the guru. Because guru is not one form. Guru is a total intelligence which is surrounding us. If you show your willingness to learn, it starts to guide you. And if need is there to meet a live guru, or if need is there to just function on your own, whatsoever way, because each guru is trying to point you towards your own tail, to look at your own tail, look at your own self, that guru represents your inner guru's direction. He's not saying, follow me. Whatever he's saying, he's just throwing you back to yourself. I've seen this happening around Osho, that once a disciple evolved in a certain way, Osho used to kick him out by criticizing him. And this guy will go, oh, Osho is this and that. Because this way he's breaking the psychological structure of guru in his head. And then the person will start to rely on their own wisdom. Wow. And that is the point of guru. Because guru is not some person who will do something to you. He will throw you back onto yourself. And one day when he sees that now you're going there, he will disappear from your life. He will either kick you out of the ashram or he will not let you be around because he knows now his presence will be dangerous because psychologically you are attached to that form. I have never in person spoken to Sadhguru or obviously to Ramana Maharshi or to Osho. Like these people either are too distant or have died before even I was born. But I, I know them in a way. Like I feel them within myself when I fall into, just fall backwards into myself. They are there. I feel ironically very blessed that I did not meet uh, one of these kind of gurus and instead was forced to look within to connect with them because Sadhguru will say this all the time. It's like, you have no need to meet me. If you are willing, I'm always there. And it's very true. You know, a lot of people message me or put in the comments like, please, I need to meet Satyaji. I need to go visit. Where did you meet him? How did I find him? And, you know, I reply to them saying, I understand your urgency. Because I also felt this for a long time. I felt so alone in my suffering. I really want this mentor figure, you know, guru or whatever. I wanted a, somebody who understood more than me. And then I met you. Immediately there was a friendship. But I only met you. I felt I was only qualified to really meet you. But I, I felt no need anymore to meet a guru. I've experienced what I need to experience just within myself using the energies that are available around, following my intuition to the right places. But I was no longer thirsting or seeking, I need to meet this person or I need to meet some person. And in that sense, when people ask me with an urgency, tell me I need to meet Satyaji, I need to be in his presence. In my heart, and my energy, I feel this immediately disqualifies this person. That if you're such a burning thing that you must meet this man, you're projecting something, you're creating some image of him or what he's going to somehow fix within you or something. To one point which you were saying that why we met, the reason is that uh, what I feel, this I was lucky enough to have this kind of interactions with gurus because I, with some gurus, I never went asking, solving a problem. I just wanted to hang out with them. And that's what they love. Because in that, they get a mind to experience their revelation through others' mind. And that's where you end up getting your problem solved as well. You understand? That is the beauty of beauty. Not efficiency. It's a, otherwise, guru isn't just an efficiency. 
you take one problem and it just fixes you and you say okay thank you so much you are the great one here is some donation and bye bye but when you are just hanging out and you both are sitting there and that creates a space for guru to really express who he is and how he sees as a human being as a great being whatever and there it ends up creating such a thunder or light which helps others also and that is the point in this you know like like this is what i was saying that it shouldn't be just answering people's questions you know yeah. it should be just uh, you know less just wonder at this and play around it's like uh, to so that that is one aspect which i feel is missing like which many people miss i met many gurus who say yeah it's boring to they touch their feet and they come but they are not willing to participate with him where they are they want guru to come to them where they are and help them out but yeah. they are not willing to psychologically go where he is and see his world and he wants to take you to other lands but you say no 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 uh, fix this that will be enough because i don't think i am ready yet <laughs> there are so many traps that people fall into and even this wo- devotion to a guru or even that thing which can start off as a tool i think for some people what's useful is that they put their own ego their own pride aside to bow to another human being with that reverence and respect but the guru doesn't want you to bow to him he wants you to bow to the whole creation in that same reverence right that's the point Yes. and a lot of people miss that point and then they become very passionately they start to defend sadguru or they say sadguru is the best osho is the best or you know it becomes almost this <laughs> tribalistic kind of thing you know like oh you know you follow osho but you know osho did all those things with sex like he is not a real guru like oh like you know then it's this whole yeah. kind of ego like my spirituality is better than your spirituality that is the real point because yeah. people don't care which guru because i follow that's why he's perfect <laughs> it's not that he is perfect that's why i follow <laughs> and and the whole point of vishnu is like like buddha said that i will come as a maitreya he was not talking about a personality because in coming time there will be no more uh, possible to play this role of guru and shishya it will be more about are you capable because it's much tougher than being a disciple are you capable to be a friend to a person really because in friends also i recently put a post we are playing up and down games with friends that oh he knows better than me and you kind of try to dominate the friend in certain ways that but can you just meet face to face as the other is without even uh, you know so that actually what this is the friendliness what you osho called friendliness that surpasses because vishnu means the one who is enjoying his cause he is not saying how to liberate it from it or how to you know get more of it that enjoying each other's presence that's where that start that that the finest of intelligence start to surface you know? because there is no motive of solving or fixing something and mostly today's role of guru is that people want to just solve some i don't know stupid need or something but they think that which any other person could do it or their focus could do it but they think guru is needed and you know what i still keep on meeting many many enlightened people around is this you usually we don't recognize them because we think we have this idea ah oh but if you see and they are so subtle the master stroke is so subtle that you need a very sophisticated intelligence to see that here i'm not bragging about myself it's a aesthetic sense you know two three lines two three words said in a way that it just shatters your whole citadel of your concepts you know like so this is where you know like i reminds me i was in a lake there is a high salt water lake and it was very cold like minus 15 and we were three of us one american indian girl and one lebanese american guy and we were staying in a cottage there is one uh, uh, villager from the uh, leh ladakh bordering the tibet he was staying with his wife old people and we were talking great philosophies about maya mm-hmm. and life and all and we asked him so baba what do you think he says world with open eyes then he closes his eyes he said no world no it took me about 2 3 hours to fuck he said the master stroke because when you open there is a world when you close it there is no world. it's your memory which is sustaining the world otherwise there is no world and that was like a shiva you know the boom wow 
is just zero any given moment and its totality and everything at any given moment. So the Guru, be careful because if you really meet Guru, <laughs> oh, <laughs> because still people are reeling from Osho's gone, you know, they're still, oh, and they're still grabbing onto their old thoughts and ego ideas and still trying to define fit it Osho into their own system. Same will happen with Sadhguru's, it's already happening. But they miss that person. The eye behind the eye, which is looking at you and saying, here I am. <laughs> that is different paths. <laughs> so I met gurus without my realizing. I was more interested into seeing the live manifestation without my knowing that it is such a thrill to, because when you look at it, you say, oh, what is looking back, you know? not what it is saying. Mm. And once you look at that, then it notices, <laughs> then it follows you. Then it appears in different forms to come to you through different people. Because essentially it's one eye or one sun reflecting as so many different suns in different waves. So if you gather courage to look at that sun and briefly even, you are addicted or you're hooked. But to really just be with this life and say, I am here, you know, kind of nakedness in that, you know, like a vulnerability. If you're really just here, you're not hiding anything. You're not protecting anything. I am here and you will see me being here. But that's not going to interfere with the way that I am here. That I feel is what's so powerful when you watch Oh, sure, you watch Sadhguru. Like, no, no matter what is happening, the depth in their eyes is so deep. And it's it's alive. It's not dead. It's like looking back at you. And it's just this unshakability. It's unapologetic. It's just there. It's not, there's no question of shame, guilt, or judgment. It's before that even, it's just there. Just there. Something similar I experienced. Uh, I listened to Osho for 30, 40 years. And recently, two years back, I was putting on discourse. I focused on not what he's saying, but who is speaking. Man, after that, listening to Osho is a psychedelic experience. Because people are usually caught with what Guru is saying. But they are not saying who is saying it. And once you zoom in on that, that who will know that, you know, you are really listening. <laughs> And another thing, when we were talking about being present, this is what means to die every given moment. In present, your whole past is dead. At the same time, you're taking a birth here with this moment. And that's why we're afraid, even though philosophical, we talk about being with this, but at the same time, we are scared to come in touch with it because it wipes out everything. It does not matter what philosophy is, what you live here. And that is what the kind of blessing is finally. If you can live that death, so you can experience your life. Thank you.